I try to make a video on using the iPad Photos app around once a year. And I do that because it's not the easiest app to navigate. There's all that stuff on the sidebar that seems to make sense until you click on it and then you can't figure out what's going on. If you'd like to understand how the Photos app works and how to navigate your photo library quickly and easily, then stick around. This video is for you. Hi, my name is Rich, and while I use my iPhone to take photos, I love viewing my photos on the iPad. The nice big screen is a great way to walk down memory lane, you know, every once in a while. And usually, I just open up my Photos app and start scrolling around trying to find stuff. And sometimes that works, but when your photo library grows from, you know, hundreds to thousands of photos, Scrolling around is like looking for a needle in a haystack. If you're anything like me, you've wanted to show a friend a photo only to give up looking for it after five minutes of scrolling. The goal of this video is to walk you through how you can use the Apple Photos app in a more practical way to find what you're looking for and how to let the app itself surface things you might not have looked at in a while. If you've watched any of my past videos, you know I like to keep things as simple as possible. So in this video, we'll cover just two topics, how to use the sidebar categories to filter your photos and find what you're looking for, and then how to create custom albums to curate photos the way that makes sense to you using the powerful search function. By the way, I know creating your own custom albums is sort of old school, but you know, that's the way I grew up, so it makes sense to me. Okay, let's get started. Okay, first up, I want to talk to you about the sidebar. So let's just open up the Photos app. And if you don't see the sidebar, you'll see this little icon right here in the top left. And if you tap on that, it'll bring the sidebar out. And you have a whole bunch of options that are already here. And none of these you can change. It's built-in options. So you have the library. And the library is essentially every photo you've ever taken. And if you notice up at the top, you have some options here. If you want to view your photos by the years, it'll take you to the photos for each individual year. And you know, that's kind of important. When I took, you know, regular photos that you put in a photo album, a lot of times I would write down the date and some kind of information on the back of the photo, and then I'd stick it in the photo album. And this is kind of like that, so you have it by years. You can also drill down to months, and if you tap on that, you'll see that you get months right here. And then you can actually drill down even further to days like that. So now we have an individual day for these photos and when they were taken. And then you can go back to all photos like that. Now, if you tap on years and you go to a year and you tap on that, it automatically takes you to months. And if you tap on a photo, it'll take you to days so it automatically drills down for you as you're looking at the photos based upon dates up at the top. But again, your library consists of all the photos you have. Now, if you notice, they're all in squares and they're kind of small. You can change that. You can tap on this and you can zoom in and it makes them bigger. And you can tap in and you can change the aspect ratio. So if you notice, some photos that I have here were taking, taken in the vertical uh, position and some were in the horizontal position, sort of landscape mode. I like to have it just in squares because it just looks better to me. But that's what the library represents. Now you also have For You, and if you tap on this, this is just something that Apple puts together. It's just memories of certain times and dates and it's certain things you've got pets and friends and if you tap on that you get pets and friends and it actually brings up some music and of course this is scout and it just creates a little video for you and that's just a handy thing to have and it's all in here for you you can't create anything in here um, but you can view things in here then they've also got a category on the left called people and pets. And if you tap on this, you'll have uh, photographs of all of the people in your various pictures. And if you tap on one of those, for example, me, there, it should bring up every photo that my face appears in. And a lot of times it does. Sometimes it doesn't do it accurately. 
and you have to clean it up, but most of the time it's pretty good. So if you're just wanting pictures of uh, a baby, in this case my grandson, you can just click on that and you'll see all of the photos. So what this does is create groups of photos for you. And of course the date information is still in there. You can still get to that. And of course you have just a whole big list of people and pets here. And you can view them uh, that way without having to create albums. And that's pretty handy. Likewise, you have over here on the left places. And this is kind of handy too. You know, I would normally create maybe... Uh, a photo album of everything that I did at the beach. But here, it's already in there, so I don't have to do it. Here's a trip that I took to Denver uh, a couple of years ago, and I can tap on that, and all of the photos for Denver come up, and it's just a, a handy way to do it. And all of this is just the places, and you can actually zoom out, and if you've been to various places around the world, all of your photos with that geolocation data will show up. And of course you can sort of drill down and get into more places. Here's some photos that I took when I was in Charlotte recently. And so you can see that uh, the places are listed on here. And that's how places works. I just think it's really, really handy. Then you have favorites. These are things or photographs that you have just deemed a favorite. And I think it's a great way to put together a collection of things that you want to see from time to time or share with friends. So if you go to your library, and I'm going to tap on this photo, and then I'll tap on this one, and then maybe this one. And then if I go over here, to the little heart up here and I tap on that I've now added this to favorites and if I go back to my favorites you'll see the photo right here and I just put in here photos that are important to me they're literally my favorite photos and that's how that works okay next you have recents and recents is your entire photo library but they're organized in the way that you received the photos. So everything in here is in chronological order in the way that my iPad has received the photo. So what does that mean? So if somebody sent me a picture and it, in messages and I saved it and the metadata in that photo was from 2021, it would show up here at the very end because that was the last picture I added to my library. However, if you went up to library, it would fall into the year 2021, so it wouldn't immediately show. So sometimes if you've noticed somebody sent you a picture, you saved it, you go to your library, and suddenly you can't find it. You don't know where it is, and you're going all back through. But if you go to recents, it's going to show up as the most recent photo that comes in. So that's kind of handy to understand that. Next you have search, and search is really, really powerful. I don't use search as much as I should, but I'm going to start using it, and I suggest you do too. If you tap in here, and if I just go back and type in Denver, and I hit search, it's going to bring up, you know, all of the photos that I took while I was in Denver. If I type in, uh, say, wedding, and I type in that, I've got a bunch of wedding photos that came up. Somehow, the iPad knows that a photo is from a wedding, and so you see it in there like that. And then you have some that are just actually labeled uh, with keywords. But it gets even better than that. Um, I took some photos of my recording studio a few years ago, and I just wondered if I had typed in the word desks, would those photos come up? I mean, literally, a desk. So I tried it. I typed in desk and I hit search and sure enough there's some of the photos of my recording studio desk. So it actually uh, understands what a desk is. So you can use the search function to find just about anything and I suggest that you try it. And it's a great way to filter out photos rather than just scrolling through everything. Then you have a section 
down here called utilities and this is things that you've imported which is kind of self-explanatory you also have something called duplicates and if you'll notice for some reason and I have no idea why I have duplicate photos here but somehow I have a bunch of duplicates in here okay if I go over here and I tap select select all then I have an option down here to merge these 60 pictures into one into 30 pictures and that's what I'm going to do to get rid of the duplicates I'm going to tap merge and I'm going to tap merge 60 items it says merge eight exact copies only there are some that are just exact so maybe I took inadvertently just took two pictures at the exact same time with my camera I didn't mean to and they're slightly different so some of them are exact copies which I want to merge and if I just wanted to do that I could do that but if I go through here and I look these pictures are so close to one another that I don't need duplicates so I'm going to tap and I'm going to merge 60 items just like that and now I have no more duplicates in there and that's one of the utilities over in the sidebar next up is media types so here you can look for a whole variety of different things if you want to look at videos you can tap on that and every video you've ever taken comes up over here so you don't have to scroll through trying to find videos you can just tap on videos right there if you want to look at selfies that you've taken with a, the camera pointed towards you that shows up there also live photos if your iPhone is set to take live photos which means it just captures a little bit of video before the picture is taken then it will show up here next up is portraits these are photos that are taken in the portrait mode on your iPhone so a lot of times you've got your iPhone set to that maybe you didn't even know you had your iPhone set to the portrait mode but it took a picture in portrait mode and if it did then those photos show up here here's a a picture of Cooper that I took in portrait mode a few years ago portrait mode will kind of blur out the background and just make the picture look really professional then you have long exposures this is a photo I took of the water and you can see that it's kind of blurred it's just another type of photo that you can take with your iPhone then you have panorama shots if you've ever taken a panorama shot here's a high school that I went to when I was a kid any time-lapse photos are in here if you tap on that you can see it's just kind of a time lapse there it's pretty quick of the ocean any slow-mo photos that are in here show up and there's Cooper getting a little and now it moves into slow motion any cinematic shots or cinematic videos that you've taken show up here here's one of Justin and it's just the way the color and the the uh, uh, focus pulls uh, that's what makes it cinematic any screenshots that you've taken on your iPad show up here any screen recordings that you've taken show up here so you've got all kinds of media types and what I'm trying to get at here is that if you choose to use these filters on the sidebar then you're probably going to find what you're looking for a lot quicker than just going to the library and then scrolling through thousands of pictures trying to find something so just keep that in mind shared albums you can actually share albums with other people I, I'm not going to get into that in this video uh, but this is where any shared albums would show up and that's it that's the sidebar and that's how you use it to find what you're looking for pretty helpful hey before I jump into custom albums if you find this video helpful please consider subscribing and tapping the little thumbs up button when you do these two things YouTube promotes the video more than if you didn't do those two things and my goal is to help as many people as I can use their iPhone and iPads and besides subscribing is you know free the the second thing I want to talk about is just having your own albums sometimes all of these things right here just don't work so you can create your own album right here so if you go to my albums and then click on new album I'm just gonna label that this desks and I'm gonna click Save and now I have all of these photos and I can choose any one of these by just simply tapping on it and clicking add 
But I have a thousand photos here and I just want photos of my desk. So if I go back here into the search feature and I type in desk and hit search, now I've got all of my desk photos and I can just tap the ones that I want to bring in like that and I can click add and now I've created a custom album of my desks. So unique photos or unique things is what should go into a custom album and it's pretty simple and pretty handy. Thanks to our friends at Henson Shaving for sponsoring this video. You know, I've used electric razors, which never delivered a smooth shave, and multi-blade razors, which are not cost-effective. You know, it hurts every time I bought refill blades that I knew wouldn't last very long. Those days are behind me now that I own a Henson razor. Henson Shaving is a family-run aerospace machine shop that started selling razors in 2020. What appealed to me is that their razor is plastic-free and there's no expensive subscription program. Their razors are made using precise CNC machines with super tight tolerances. And what distinguishes these razors from others is how well the blade is supported. The blade is exposed less than the width of a human hair and is held at a precise angle making it safe to use while delivering a smooth shave. Henson Shaving is also about sustainability. Unlike plastic razors, their razors are built to last, you know, probably a lifetime. When you hold it in your hand, you'll know exactly what I mean. And the cost of ownership is way less than electric razors and especially cartridge razors. Get 100 free blades with the purchase of a razor using the code in the description below. Then get ready for a close, safe shave. Thanks to our friends at Henson Shaving for their support of this channel. You know, I think it's good to go back and review how to use the Photos app from time to time. It's one of those apps that has some pretty good features that just to end up getting overlooked. And spending a few minutes on a refresher course is well worth the time. Okay, that's it for today. I hope this short video helped you out as always. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.